Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams of the EC Abrams Tutorial Channel, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating this slanted logo reveal. It is a total ripoff of Al Jazeera Plus, but a lot of people ask me how to do this, so I am obliging. I do the things that people ask me to do sometimes. Let's open up After Effects and get into it. So the first thing to do is make a new composition. We were doing it and we've made a new composition. And really the first thing you should do is probably sketch out what you're going to do. I've already done this once, so I kind of know where I'm going. If you're doing this for the first time, just a little bit of sketching outside of the program can really speed things along. So let's get into it. Making a rectangle, double click on the old rectangle tool and let's adjust the size here by twirling into the rectangle group. It's made a group full of a parametric path, meaning a path determined by parameters. And we're just gonna type in 100 by 360. Those are the vertical and horizontal parameters I'm interested in, or horizontal and vertical, really depends how pedantic you wanna get. And we're gonna change the fill color to be black. Awesome. And we want to animate this on. This is going to be like the first bar of the E and then we'll duplicate things and it'll be fine. To animate it on, I want it to eventually end up at size and position where we're at now. I'm going to go ahead, four frames, set keyframes here at the end state that I want. And then I'm going to go in to the start and I'm going to change this to have a size of 100 comma zero and a position of zero comma 180. 180 is half of 360 and that causes this kind of thing. So that's all very well and good, but this is not at all what was promised in the title or description or intro. This needs to be slanted. How are we going to do that? There are many ways we could apply an effect to it. We could, you know, convert this to a path and mess around with it. Or the simplest way is to just go into the transform colon rectangle options down here and skew it. And I'm going to skew it by 20. I think that's a good number. You might do more, might do less. I don't know. It's up to you. You got to live your own life, but that's what we're doing in this example. And we are done with that. So let's rename this uh, back because this is one of the back pieces. It's going to be behind stuff to sort of simulate this spiral look that we're trying to do. So we're going to take that, we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to create the front, a front piece of this. And the front pieces are all going to be yellow. So let's just go over here, get a yellow. That looks pretty yellowy to me. And we're going to layer, transform, flip vertically. So it's going to be going from top to bottom. See how that looks? Woo! Fun, real fast and interesting. And we're going to move this in space. We're going to start by arranging all of our pieces spatially, and then we'll start arranging them uh, temporally in time. So holding down the command, I'm just going to snap stuff to other stuff. Click just like that. Perfect. Uh, let's make the layer yellow so we can keep things organized and we'll duplicate and we'll move. Nice. And then we'll duplicate and then we'll move. Awesome. Things are looking good. It's not snapping for some reason. Got to zoom in. Awesome. And I think we need a final piece. So I'm going to duplicate and move. All right. Right there. So we've got what's going to be the incoming uh, line and then we've got the back of the E, the back of the C, half of the A, the other half of the A. Let's uh, make some changes to layer order here. Get layer four down onto the bottom. Now we need layer four to be longer. I want it to come in from out of frame. Uh, let's see, let's change the size to be not 360 but twice that. So times two please. And that means I'll need to adjust its position. Come on, snap, you jerk. There you go. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, at the start, though, it's going to be 0, 360. So then it comes in, yep, coming in all the way from the top. And down here at the back end of things, we need this one here to go a little bit longer. If you want to do just like the example, if not, don't do this step. What do I care? So we're going to change this to 540 maybe, making it a bit longer. So now it needs to be repositioned. Awesome, that worked out. And that'll need to be changed a little bit. So this will have to go to 270, I think. Yeah, that looks correct. Awesome. So 
This is kind of the general shape we've got going on. We now need to make some of these yellow parts go away. I'm not interested in them hanging around. So this one needs to go away. So I'll just hit you here. Go ahead, one, two, three, four frames. And it's gonna go from 100, 360 to 100 comma 0 and 0 comma minus 180. Don't worry if all these numbers don't seem very intuitive. Uh, the point is that it needs to go to the end over here. So if your numbers are different than mine, don't worry about it. Uh, this layer here needs to do the same thing. So I could just copy these keyframes and paste them over here. Uh, don't just select the layer and hit paste though. Select properties you want to send it to and then paste. It can paste it somewhere else if you're not specific. Be specific. And then for this last layer here, we're going to set a keyframe on the size. It's going to go to zero and its position is going to go wee. I'm going to, you know, guess it's minus 360. Big whoopty surprise there. Awesome. So those are all going away. And now we need to adjust these things in time. So it kind of makes a bit of sense. So bear with me as we go through this process. We start with front layer four. All right. I'm going to hit you to call up its keyframes here. Move ahead. Once it's down like this, then we need back to start. Awesome. And then back comes up. So now we need this front one here. It needs to start. Then we go ahead four frames, and then this next one needs to start. And then one, two, three, four. And then we need the next one to start. And then one, two, three, four here. And then we need the next one to start. You following where this is going? And boom, kind of like that. So if we follow along this fun adventure, we it does that. Select all those, hit U, Grab all of those keyframes and then hit F9, or you can go animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease them, ease them however you like. Just make sure you ease them. And that causes a bit of a nicer look to these things. Something else I'd like to do though, is take these first keyframes here and don't ease those. Actually keep them linear so that they're coming in a little bit faster. And I also like to just extend them a little bit so that they're resolving a little bit slower than the other things, just so we can kind of enjoy that they're hanging around a little bit longer. And you can kind of convince people this is a spiral a little bit better. And then you might want to just do the same to the next one, just kind of overlap it a little bit. So it just kind of messes with the timing a little bit. It's a little bit creative. That's fun. People like to be creative. So we've got all of our vertical pieces done, I think. And unless you're going to do a logo that is II triangle, you're gonna need some cross pieces to do the rest of the word parts. Letter parts, whatever. The point is you need more parts. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate uh, this front piece here, and we're gonna call this horizontal. You could call it like a cross, call it whatever makes sense to you. I'm gonna change its color from yellow to orange. And now I'm just going to rotate it into place, you know? I want it to be, I don't know, what, 90 degrees? Ugh. Oh, man, that's wrong. Uh, 90 degrees is not what I want. Um, what I want it to be is going horizontally, right? So I actually want 110. And that's because we've skewed it by 20. So 90 plus 20 is 110. And here we are, and the angles line up, and it's very beautiful. We're also going to alter this thing's length. So we're gonna alter the final keyframe of the size here. Just bring that down maybe to 500, change the color, black, awesome. Move that layer behind front three, cool. And uh, what else could we do? We should definitely move it in space so that it's lined up sort of with the middle of all this garbage and uh, move it over kind of like this, or like here, or like somewhere. I don't really care that much, but now it looks kind of like an A. I think I'm happy with how A-like that appears, and uh, you'll just have to sort of adjust where that is in time. Maybe it is a little bit slower than other things. Maybe its initial keyframes are linear, because it's kind of appearing out of nowhere. Whoa! And then you might adjust the graph, go into the graph editor, have a look at the speed graph, grab those handles and go like, wow, kind of like that. So it's coming on real nice. Now let's make the other parts. Those could be fun. We need the top of this, bottom of this, middle of this. So let's duplicate horizontal to get horizontal two. 
Um, let us, we want it to come on the opposite direction, so not from this side, but from the other side. So what you could do with that is flip it, chop it, do all sorts of stuff. Or you could just change this one keyframe here, you know, from positive to negative, and now it's doing exactly what we wanted. So we can take this, we can kind of snap it into place up here, and oh, look at that, size is perfect. Change the color, just like that. Put it behind everything, let's just get that down here. Let's duplicate it, and put it down here. Awesome, that is still looking like the example, I'm happy with that. Let's do another duplicate and put this snap it middle to middle in here kind of go over this away call up its keyframes and let's uh, make it thin thinner 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 there we go that looks pretty fun 100 by 100 sure why not and what we'll just have to do is probably alter these keyframes here just so that this stuff is kind of starting way over here i guess that could be fun Maybe, maybe, maybe that's fun. I don't really know. I don't know what's fun for other people. All I know is what I like. And then we'll just move them in time to be elsewhere. Whee! Blunk, blunk, blunk. So we've got our horizontal pieces. We've got our vertical pieces. Let's play this back. And I'm enjoying that. The one thing that is woefully incorrect about this is it is not in the right space in the frame, and we need to give it a motion blur. So let's do that now. Let's turn on motion blur for all the layers, and also for the composition, sure. And now let's take that composition and drag it into a brand new composition, and we can enjoy looking at this still in the wrong space. So I'm gonna hit A to call up the anchor point. I am going to call up my proportional grid. I'm going to adjust the anchor point values until I'm till I'm happy with where this thing is sitting in the frame, I'm trying to get it into the visual center of things, not necessarily the mathematical center of things. That looks pleasing. Let's make a new solid. Let's drop that solid in behind everything. Wee fun. And as this thing is coming on, let's have it scale up. That could be fun. Since we've moved the anchor point, it's gonna be scaling up like we're zooming in. So we'll start it at 100% and we'll, you know, maybe by four seconds, it is at 120. That's fun. But if we zoom in, we can see a little problem. And that is that our scaling has made it ugly. And because we are beautiful people, we would like our work to be beautiful as well. So you could, you know, sit here and you could you could hit this button over here. This is the quality button. That's fun, you could do that. Or what I would recommend is you hit the collapse transformation continuous rasterization button, which will give you all the vector cleanness you want right out here, which is fun. And you'll also wanna make sure that you've got motion blur on for this composition as well. And we look how motiony blurry that is. There is one little thing you gotta watch out for. I want you to look right here. Look at this. Look at this hideous thing right here. We've got black pixels mixing with yellow pixels in an unpleasing way right at this boundary. Now that's happening because, 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 it's hard to kind of determine which it should be when you're in these kind of gray areas. It's kind of a pixel tear kind of issue. So what you can do is you can go in here, you can either bump this just a little bit to get it out of the way, or you could shrink this one down a little bit. You could shrink back three down by a whole one pixel. Maybe you need to do both to uh, make that work out. Uh, but you can kind of mitigate that problem just with little tweaks, little tweaks to get that cleaned up. But then everything's looking pretty good, pretty nice. I think I'm happy with this. Uh, I might move the anchor point a little bit more, uh, kind of like this, get it even more centered up, I guess. And you are, you are all done. You are ready to make use of this thing. How you would probably make use of it? Well, instead of a white solid, you could put some footage under it. You could 
make this go away and you could just import this particular composition into Premiere, for example, and then put it over top of things. You could, I don't know, render it with an alpha channel. We got tutorials about that on here. You could do a lot of things, but we've now duplicated and ripped off the AJ Plus logo, Al Jazeera Plus. Please don't sue me. And I hope this has answered some people's questions. Speaking of questions, if this has been hard for you, please let me know in the comments and I will try to guide you through. If things are really complicated, well, I do offer the project file that you just saw me make. We made it together right now if you followed along. So go over to evanabrams.com to pick that up. If you have questions about most Motion graphics, After Effects in general, hit me up on the Twitter or on the Facebook. And if this is something you are interested in learning more about, subscribe to this channel. We put out new stuff here all the time, so make sure you are subscribed to get that. And if you don't want to wait, please look at all the stuff we have on the channel right now. There's a lot of stuff about logos, shape layers, motion graphics, VFX, lower thirds, all the things. We got lots of things. So if any of that sounds appealing, check it out. There should be stuff on screen directing you to do things right now. That's enough out of me. Go out there, make some cool stuff, and uh, if you subscribe to this channel, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a great day.